Great. Thank you very much. So um, this project is going to be showing, it's actually a network meta-analysis of low-calorie sweetened beverages versus water on glucose tolerance and cardiometabolic risk. We got a little bit more information to add. So my apologies, I don't have a conflict of interest slide, but I do not have any conflicts of interest myself personally to report. So first of all, if anyone's not familiar with the term low-calorie sweetened beverages, these are beverages which contain a low-calorie sweetener in place of sugar as they provide a sweet taste without the added energy. And low-calorie sweetened beverages go by many terms. You may have heard of them being called artificially sweetened beverages or non-nutritive sweetened beverages. But for the purposes of this presentation, I'll be referring to them as low-calorie sweetened beverages. Now this slide here shows several low-calorie sweeteners that are used in beverages across North America and Europe. And as you can see, the ones listed range in sweetness from being anywhere from 200 to 600 times sweeter than table sugar or sucrose. Because they are so much sweeter than sucrose, a very small amount is required to elicit the same taste. Now, even though the safety of low-calorie sweeteners has been approved by agencies worldwide, including the Food and Drug Administration, Health Canada, and the European Food Safety Authority. There's concern that the use of low-calorie sweetened beverages themselves may increase risk of obesity and diabetes. This concern led the 2015 Dietary Guidelines Advisory Committee in the U.S. to recommend that sugars in the diet uh, not be replaced with low-calorie sweetened beverages, but instead with healthier options such as water. Now, whether water or low-calorie sweetened beverages more than water contributes to obesity remains unclear. In this 2017 meta-analysis that was published in the Canadian Medical Association Journal, results from 30 cohort studies indicated non-significant associations between routine intake of low-calorie sweeteners and weight changes, but an association with BMI gain metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, and cardiovascular events. However, with prospective cohorts, there is a high likelihood of reverse causality in that high consumers of low-calorie sweeteners may be doing so because they are already overweight and obese and therefore already at risk of associated diseases. So in this same meta-analysis, when we look at the seven randomized control trials that were included, we see non-significant effects in regards to weight, insulin resistance, and HbA1c between the low-calorie sweeteners and control comparators among obese, overweight, and hypertensive participants. The issue with this analysis, however, is the variation in comparators of water, placebo, or match weight loss diet did not allow for the displacement of energy by low calorie sweeteners. And the intervention was also not limited to beverages alone. So now while other reviews have been published exploring low calorie sweeteners, none to date have quantitatively compared low calorie sweetened beverages specifically to water, which is the gold standard replacement beverage for sugar sweetened beverages. So in response to the recommendations of the 2015 Dietary Guidelines Advisory Committee, the purpose of this project was to systematically review and quantitatively evaluate the results from randomized controlled trials that compare water to low-calorie sweetened beverages on outcomes of adiposity, glycemic control, and cardiometabolic risk. So I'll go into the methods. Our meta-analysis was conducted in accordance to the Cochrane Handbook for Systematic Reviews of Interventions. It followed the PRISMA reporting guidelines and is registered in clinicaltrials.gov. Risk of bias was done for each of the studies that was selected. In order to frame the research question, the PICOS framework was used. The population included all health backgrounds, and only those trials that were at least one week in duration or longer were included. Now, the statistical analysis was done through RevMan using generic inverse differences, mean differences, and 95% confidence intervals. Because there was less than 10 studies uh, used in this meta-analysis, uh, publication bias could not be accessed, and nor could a priori subgroup analysis be done. So in regards to a network meta-analysis, it allows the comparison of multiple treatments using both direct comparisons of interventions 
within randomized controlled trials, so in this case, low calorie sweetened beverages versus water, and indirect comparisons across trials based on a common comparator, in this case, sugar sweetened beverages, which gives us three statistical ways of looking at the relative effect between low calorie sweetened beverages to sugar sweetened beverages and how that differs from sugar sweetened beverages to water and low calories and water to low calorie sweetened beverages as opposed to just low calorie sweetened beverages to water. The data for the meta-analysis was pooled using network meta-analysis random effects models, where mean differences were synthesized for direct comparisons with contribution from indirect comparisons and expressed as mean differences in 95% confidence intervals. And the reason why we're doing, we decided to do a meta-analysis for this project is that it really allows us to synthesize a more precise estimate of the effect of the data that we're looking at. The strength of the evidence for each outcome was assessed using the grading recommendations, assessment, development, and evaluation. Now, randomized control trials start off as high and can be downgraded based on a number of factors. Okay, our results. Our search identified a total of 15 trials, nine of which were direct comparisons and 12 were indirect comparisons for a total of 1,446 participants who were overweight, obese, healthy, and male and female participants were included. The mean age was 35, follow-up range from about four to 52 weeks, and beverage dosages range from anywhere from 250 milliliters per day up to 2,000 milliliters per day. Now, because there's a lot of outcomes that we looked at, we've represented them here as a super plot instead of showing all the individual forest plots. So on your left, you see all the outcomes followed by the number of trial comparisons for each outcome, the number of participants in each outcome, as well as the mean differences in 95% confidence intervals. So to be able to show all the results in the same scale, we calculated the standard mean differences in 95% confidence intervals. And from our results, we see no difference between water and low calorie sweetened beverages for any of the outcomes. Now, in regards to the network, we recalculated the mean differences using network meta-analyses, which incorporated both direct and indirect estimates. And again, we see no difference between low calorie sweetened beverages to water. Now, again, we use the grade to assess the certainty of the evidence for each outcome. Overall, the evidence ranged from low to high, with the majority being moderate. Downgrades were made mainly for imprecision and indirectness. We did not downgrade for inconsistency, since any heterogeneity was explained with the removal of one study. Um, there was serious impre imprecision for a majority of the outcomes as the 95% confidence intervals included both clinically important harm and benefit. Again, no downgrades were made for public publication bias as it could not be assessed due to the small number of studies that were included. And for risk of bias, there was no downgrades as um, it, risk of bias for each study was assessed as either being low or unclear. So in conclusion, there is no difference between low calorie sweetened beverages compared to water in their effect on glycemic control, adiposity, and cardiometabolic risk. Uh, some of the strengths of this meta-analysis included that we employed a comprehensive and reproducible search and a selection process of the literature. We collated and synthesized the available evidence from controlled trials, which provide the greatest protection against bias. And we use the great approach to assess the certainty of the evidence. Again, a network meta-analysis allowed the comparison of multiple treatment alternatives simul simultaneously and gave us a more precise estimate of the effect. Some of the limitations included was that um, within some of the studies selected, or most of the studies selected, they did not name the sweetener that was used in the beverages, or there was a combination of different sweeteners being used. And uh, with grade, we found imprecis imprecision in the estimate. So in order to address the sources of uncertainty, there's a need for more larger, longer, and higher quality trials. 
So with that, I'd just like to thank the Toronto 3D Risk Factor Modification and uh, my supervisor, <laughs> Dr. John Stephen Piper, as well as Tom Oliver. He's on my committee and he's here too. And I don't know if there's any time for questions, but I guess there will be time later. And if any of you would like to reach me by email, my email address is here. Thank you.